Hi friends, it's Lisa Hetrick, illustrator for Gina K Designs, and I'm so grateful you could join me today. I have a really fun card project to share with you today that is inspired by this card that's a little bit washy-washy watercolory, and I just kind of wanted to take it to another level. So here's a sample of what we're going to make together today, but this one just kind of got a little bit out of control with some of the watercolor techniques, so I'm going to dial it back and show you how to make a loose watercolor floral card with some new stamp sets. All of the supplies that I'm sharing here are listed down below with links, but I've got some watercolor paper here, and I have some watercolor paper cut out with this super fun scallop master layouts die from Gina K Designs. I have some pink cardstock here cut to an A2 size card. Here are the stamp sets I'm going to be using. I've got Melanie Munchinger's Ma Magnificent Moths. I have the uh, Count It All Joy stamp set and the companion dies actually for both of these sets that I'm going to be using. And here are all the inks and other supplies. I've got some Gina K Designs embellishments and some glue, some Distress Oxide and Obsidian Amalgam ink. And I'm using some of my watercolors, some pink watercolors, but you could also use water-based markers as well. So let's dive into the first thing that we're going to do. And I'm going to cut out the charcuterie board for this project and just use the die for that. And I'm going to start by inking up the big floral in the Count It All Joy stamp set with some obsidian amalgam ink so that I can do some watercolor techniques. And the amalgam ink is perfect for that. And I'm going to stamp this beautiful flower on the board three times from the upper right hand corner to the center to the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and set this aside once I'm finished stamping and start to prepare the card elements for the rest of the card. So on the next piece of watercolor paper, I'm just inking up that big honkin' floral again and just stamping that down. And now I'm grabbing all of my leafery elements uh, that I'm going to be using for the card and just gonna ink all of these up at once with some of this Distress Oxide ink. I just picked this color because I wanted to work with this lime green color. You can use any ink color that you want. I just wanted to play around with this Distress Oxide a bit. Um, yeah, super fun. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go ahead. I've got all of my elements for the card, um, basically stamped down. And now I'm grabbing this magnificent moth from Melanie's set, and I wanna just go ahead and stamp that down as well. So all of my images are stamped, and now I need to uh, create embellishments with these. So I'm grabbing all of the coordinating dies and I'm going to run it through my Platinum 6 die cutter and then I'll have all of my embellishments for the card. And here they are. Ah, this is like the funnest part of card making when you run everything through the die cutter and you've got all these gorgeous little embellishments that you can work with to build your card. So I've kind of just have built this card in stages too, where I'm doing all of the stamping first before we move on to the watercolor technique. Okay, so all of my embellishments are finished for now. Before I start watercoloring them, I'm going to bring in my card layer that I already cut out with my master layout scallop die. And I'm going to add a little bit of color with the Distress Oxide here. I'm gonna use the Distress Oxide as a watercolor paint. So I'm just getting a little bit of water onto that base, and then I'm just gonna add a little bit of Distress Oxide to it and just kinda of get it to flow into the water. Now the paper that I'm using, the watercolor paper that I'm using is a Canson watercolor paper. It's not the 100% cotton paper that I usually use, but because we're using watercolor in what I would call a very loose, not super wet, washy way, this paper is just fine for that. So I'm really working in super light, washy layers 
So this paper works really great for that and it's economical and affordable for our, our card making projects. So I'm taking a little bit of paper towel and just dabbing off some of the excess. Now I'm gonna move on to the painting. This is the painting portion of the video. I'm gonna dive a little bit deep into this watercolor technique for this kind of paper. So I'm basically not following any kind of like structure or the lines for the most part. You can see that I've just, I've gotten a lot of pigment on my brush. The brush is wet, the paper is dry, but I don't want the brush to be super wet. So all I did was drop in some of the color into the floral. And then I'm using that pigment that I've got and I'm just moving it around, around the florals that are in the bottom part of the die cut. And I'm working in very, very light washes. So the brush is wet, but not sopping wet. The paper is dry and I'm picking up a lot of color and just dropping it in here. You can see that I'm not like really concerned about things going outside of the lines. I'm just dropping the color in and then I'm gonna go back, clean off my brush and just move the pigment around to the outer edges of the flower petal. Now, the reason why this technique works really well with the paper, this kind of paper, this is 140 pound, watercolor paper. It's the Canson brand. And this paper is not, this watercolor paper is great for light wash techniques like this. And it works really, really great with your water, your water-based markers. And when we're using it with paint, you can do these really light washes and get that whole like washy watercolor effect without uh, stressing about your no line watercoloring or stressing about where the paint's going to go. So you get really super washy looks for it. Now I've already stamped in the center in the Count It All Joy stamp set. I have two flower centers and I've stamped in the center that has like the little spikies on it, which is sort of like an anemone um, flower or, or another flower, like a poppy flower that has that kind of center to it. Um, just to add a little texture to that center of the floral. And I'm going around and you can see that I'm just dropping in color again, randomly. I'm just dropping it in. I'm not really um, using a brush stroke to paint it in. And then I clean my brush and then just pull that pigment out to the outer edge. Now, what this does with this paper is it gives it that, that very washy look but it's not super sopping wet. Um, so I'm able to just have a lot of fun with my watercolor and get that washy watercolor effect without worrying so much about where's my paint gonna go or am I doing this petal correctly? And am I worrying about the where the light is? I'm really just kind of focusing on having some fun with watercolor and just dropping it into my project here. Now, I got into it and I realized that, oh, I wanted to paint this flower yellow, not pink. And, um, but I love the pink so much that I decided to just add, instead of starting over, just add a little bit of yellow to the petals here. The paint, um, the, the paper is still kind of wet, so I can just drop in little bits of yellow in a couple areas and it will mix with the pink that I have here and it'll just give me another look and feel. I'll get some peach tones, I'll have some pink, and I'll have some um, pretty yellows. So I just went for it and just worked with what I had. So I'm just going ahead and just use my heat tool and dried everything off. And now I'm going to bring this up so that you can see up close some of the washy washy looks that we are able to achieve on this paper and it's doing more of what I what's called blooming so there's like lights and darks and you can see I'm gonna just show you this you can see that the paper's still wet here but when I go to try to move that color around it kind of pulls it away 
and you can see the white of the paper. That's what happens on this kind of paper. The Canson paper that's 140 pound is, is made of wood pulp, so it's not 100% cotton, but the effects that you can get with it are very fun. And what I would call easy going watercolor washy effects that um, just bring, bring all the joy. And I just love it. So, okay. So now it's time to just kind of put the card together. So I'm just starting with my card base. And now I've put the charcuterie board down on the card base and the layer. And I'm just kind of positioning where I want it to be over here on the left hand side. The other flower is going to uh, line up. I'm going to line that flower die cut up with that bottom right flower. So you can see I'm lining up that petal. So I'm basically popping it up over, but using what I stamped down as my guide for where I'm going to put that flower. I got a little, I got a little boogered up here at the top with a little bit of the pink pigment, but I just decided to go with it and blend it out into the distress ink and just get another color going and have some fun with it. So I'm adding some glue to the back of these leafery embellishments and I'm just tucking them in beside this beautiful flower and just building the, all the card elements together. This card is going to end up not having a sentiment on the card because <laughs> I didn't leave any room for the sentiment. So I'm going to put a sentiment on the inside of the card and just kind of have some fun with it. So I wanted to decide where I was going to put this moth because the, it's just a beautiful stamp from Melanie and it's a striking color, a contrast of color when I've uh, stamped it in that obsidian and just love it. I love the washy watercolor and the mix of some of the black obsidian with the greens and I just want to finish it off with a little bit of Emerald City sequins. I'm just going to pop three little sequins on here. I tend, when I'm making my cards in these tutorials, I tend to let the stamps be the star of the show and try to mix and mash up my stamp sets to create all of the embellishments for the card base without a lot of height, but adding a lot of texture. But these sequins are just amazing for just adding a little extra zip to the card without adding a ton of height to the card. And I just, Emerald City is my favorite one out of the mix because it's got this green and yellows and it's, it's springy and it's reflective and I just love it. So I'm digging the way this whole card is looking. I'm loving the layout. I'm loving these washy watercolor effects that I was able to get, and I'm just loving it. But I felt like there might be a little something else I wanted to add to it. And this this is the, the finishing technique I tend to do often. So I'm just dipping my brush. I've got a really wet brush here. Dipped it into my um, watercolor paint, and I'm just doing a little bit of splatter just to add a little extra texture and zip to this card and I'm digging it. I'm just loving the way this came out. It feels very springy and I just had a ton of fun stamping and watercoloring and pulling this whole card together. Just super fun. If you haven't had a chance, you can grab the free card idea download. The link is down below in the description. You can also head over to my website at indigojadeart.com slash craft your joy and grab all of my stamp set freebies. I will be sharing more card tutorials over the next few weeks using this set to help inspire you. Thanks so much for watching. Please consider sharing the joy by liking this video and subscribing to this channel. And I'm sharing more card and watercolor tutorial videos for your inspiration right here. So come on in and take a peek at my tutorials. I have a lot to share and I'll see you next time.